Okay, so central nervous system is very important for the body, right? Super, super capable, um, carries out a lot of functions. It's very important to protect it, okay? Um, so in these next few slides, I'm gonna show you some of the ways that we go about protecting the central nervous system, okay? So in this slide, we're showing the bone and the meninges, okay? So the um, brain and spinal cord are surrounded by bone, right? So you've got the skull around the brain. Again, this is a sagittal section like this, okay? Um, and then around the spinal cord, you have your vertebrae, right? So, you know, just like when you go to a party and you bring cupcakes and you bring them in that, you know, big, well, if you have one, one of those like fancy big plastic things to protect it, pr to protect the cupcakes from getting smushed, uh, the bone is going to do the same thing, okay? So same idea, higher stakes, okay? Um, the meninges are a series of three membranes that surround the brain and the spinal cord. Um, I don't expect you to know the names, but you might have heard of them before, so I'm going to mention them here. We've got the pia mater, the arachnoid mater, and the dura mater. So you might have heard of like the pia mater or the dura mater in another class somewhere else. Um, but yeah, we have these membranes that kind of help to hold the shape, um, kind of hold it all together, kind of like a casing on a sausage. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of offer that protection. All right, moving on. The next entity that we have for protecting the central nervous system is the cerebrospinal fluid, okay? So we have this fluid that not only surrounds the brain and spinal cord, but, they, but it also bathes the brain and spinal cord from the inside. So what you can see here is different views of the brain and these little blue structures inside of the brain are uh, what we call ventricles. They're these like chambers that hold cerebrospinal fluid, okay? Also in the spinal cord, we have this canal through which cerebrospinal fluid flows, the central canal here, okay? Um, so how does the cerebrospinal fluid protect the central nervous system? It actually does it in two ways. Um, so first of all, it just provides physical protection, right? So it's kind of like it acts as a cushion, right? It allows just some leeway for like the brain or the spinal cord to kind of jiggle around, um, without getting damaged, right? So I think your book um, draws an analogy with like a block of tofu. It's kind of like, you know, imagine your brain to be a block of tofu and then you've got um, the plastic casing around the tofu, which would be kind of like your bone. And then you've got that liquid in there that keeps the brain from uh, like colliding with the skull right, or the spinal cord from colliding with the vertebrae um, and protecting it in that way, okay? Another way that cerebrospinal fluid provides protection to the brain and spinal cord is um, chemically, right? So as I made reference to in the first set of lectures for this class, um, the brain and spinal cord neural function is very, very dependent on the exact concentrations of certain ions inside and outside of the cell. Um, and it's also just very sensitive to, you know, you don't want toxins to get in there, right? So we're going to have blood coming in. We don't want all of that stuff to get in towards the brain and towards the spinal cord. Um, the way that we protect it is by highly regulating the composition of the cerebrospinal fluid, okay? So um, just in case you're curious, um, there are these structures here, like these red things. Um, these guys like kind of filter the blood to make cerebrospinal fluid, okay? 
Um, and then we have this highly regulated um, fluid that's flowing in through and around the brain and spinal cord, okay? Um, I also just wanna mention, so you've probably heard of spinal taps. What ha happens in a spinal tap is they uh, stick a needle um, through your meninges, okay? Um, and actually through your vertebrae as well, like kind of in the space between a couple of vertebrae. The vertebrae aren't shown in this picture, but they do that and then they draw out um, this cerebrospinal fluid from this area that's surrounding the spinal cord. And so that's a way for them to uh, sample your cerebrospinal fluid and tell if there's something wrong with it, if the composition is off, or if you have um, a, like a bacterial infection or something um, that can be a sign of meningitis. Oh, by the way, meningitis is the inflammation of the meninges. So that's why it's a very um, serious uh, condition because it kind of, your, it puts your brain and spinal cord at risk of, of getting damaged. 